How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at American Gothic. This is from 1987, directed by John Hogue and stars Sarah Thorgov, Mark Erickson, Rob Steiger, uh, Yvonne DiCarlo, and Jennifer Wright. And this is also based on the painting American Gothic by Grant Wood, or at least the post-production team did. I don't know how much they thought of the painting when they were making the actual movie. Like, the title and this poster really do lean heavy into the painting, but, like, Pa wears a hat, and he doesn't ever kill anyone with a pitchfork, I don't think. It really doesn't look like this most of the movie, and I kind of think that this may have been an after-the-fact idea. Wish it was more thoroughly soaked in. But that being said, uh, later on, Wes Craven would make Scream, the title of that movie, as well as The Mask, being inspired by the Edward Munch painting. Uh, if you guys know any other horror movies inspired by classic artwork, I would love to hear it. Is it just these two? There, there's got to be more, right? Uh, anyway, this movie is one that it was, uh, it was 1987. That was later on in the slasher boom. We were in a post-Freddy Krueger world. Slashers were expected to be a little bit more creative, you know? And this movie is creative. The idea that the characters are stuck on an island that's new, unique, and different, and I like that. It's a family of slashers, and that's really cool and different. And the final girl has a little bit more of a story, and when she becomes the final girl at the end, goes down a very interesting path. There's lots of stuff that work with this movie, but sadly, large chunks that also don't work. This is one of those movies that is kind of almost a classic, you know? It's got some really good creative moments going for it, and I say check it out if you can find it, and in general I watched the movie, I didn't pause it too terribly much, and I thought hey that was that was kind of fun, but not gonna lie, there are some faults. If, for example, Ma and Pa here are kind of sidelined by their kids. They have these kids that are fully grown adults, that act and dress like kids, so Ma and Pa have somehow got them in a state of arrested development or brainwashed or something, and it is kind of creepy. And when they're doing creepy kid stuff, like the swing set scene or the kiss my baby scene, there are some good creepy moments when the movie's firing that really, really do work. But on the other hand, they are on screen a little bit too long, and at times it does cross the line into being kind of silly. Not gonna lie, a few times I did think that they reminded me of, like, weird SNL characters. They're good when they're good. They're not always good. And then Ma and Pa themselves, like I said, the poster would look like it's all about them, and they do get sidelined. But also, like, when they're doing evil stuff, okay, they're evil. But when they're not being overtly evil, they're really not that scary. And, like, either make them nice and then have, like, it's, oh, it's a twist that they're evil. Or have them be overtly sinister and, you know, it's like, oh, man, that's, that's a scary guy. But they don't do that. The, the movie frames them as being super scary. And then they'll do, like, minor things, like... Oh yeah, hey, you can stay at our house, but the boys and girls cannot sleep in the same room. That's not scary. Or, oh, uh, we'll give you free food, we'll make dinner for you, but we're going to pray first. That's not scary. Like, these are slightly strict older people. They're not, you know, until they are being overtly scary, they're really not that's scary, and it's like the writer had never met old people before and then finally met one and freaked out. Like, for real, one of the girls will decide that Ma and Pa are evil and start to not trust them because they won't let her smoke in the house. Don't smoke in the house! That's a bad thing! Am I secretly an old person? Maybe. I... <laughs> I don't know. 
Again, the movie does heat up at times, and when it gets going, it really gets going. And I do like the, you know, crazy different concept that this movie takes. It is really creative, but there are just a few major missteps along the way. And yeah, it doesn't 100% fire all the time. But when it does work, it does work. And in general, it does work. It's just, it, it's definitely one of those where you can see why it isn't quite a classic, but why a lot of people would like it. So not the strongest recommendation ever, but for a strange, kind of forgotten 80s movie, yeah, it's good enough in that regard, and I did in general like it. Uh, let's talk a bit about the plot. I'm not gonna do any major spoilers. I do want to take a moment, analyze, do a deeper analysis, talk about what works and doesn't. I'm not gonna be talking about the end though, so no significant spoilers, but from here on out, let's dig down deeper. Anyway, we open up with the main girl, the final girl, getting out of an asylum. And there is a cool opening shot, but again, it doesn't 100% work. The camera is behind chair, a chair with a barred back, and it makes it look like the final girl's locked up behind bars. But then we show a second camera from a different angle, and we get to see that it's just the chair, right? The thing is, because it's two different shots, rather than the camera zooming out and panning, you kind of don't get super easily that it was a chair, and you have to really be paying attention to get the metaphor. I do wish that this was one shot instead of two. I know, digging in too hard, move on. But anyway, uh, turns out she lost a baby, and the boyfriend or husband, I'm not sure which, says, we're going to get her out of there. We're going to give her a good time with her friends. We're going to try for another baby and move on with our life. And I do like they show us a shot of her playing with the baby in a bathtub. And that's really all you need to understand the story and go, oh, no, that's sad and dark. But of course, we do get the rest of that scene. Again, unnecessary and knowing less may be creepier, but whatever. Again, I know move on. Um, they get on a plane, and there's no pilot character, so I guess one of their friends just owns an airplane, and we see it taking off into the sky, complete with adventure music, and then some smoke, and then they land on an island. Right off the bat, that's really cool. Trapped on an island, going on an adventure in your little seaplane, there's a lot going on here that's really different and fun. I wish we got more island survival stuff, but whatever. It's cool to see them stranded on an island and the guys working on a plane and they're like, I don't know how we're going to get out of here. And that's, of course, when they're going to find Ma and Pa. At first, they don't think anyone's there. And we do get some scenes, like with the main character, like where everyone else finds the record player. They're all dancing around and she's kind of off to the side just dancing a little bit by herself but not really into it I do like that character moment there's another character moment where one of her friends almost drowns and she flips out because her baby drowned and she freezes and doesn't help the friend there is a bit more character here than you might expect and I ultimately really like the final girl but anyway we're at Ma and Pa's cabin they show up and why they're a little bit scared at first, again, like I said, Ma and Pa are relatively hospitable. Food, a place to stay, they're not mad that you messed up their house. They're not really scary, even though the movie wants to say, hey, there's this creepy couple living on an island. There really needed to be more to hint at them being evil before they were overtly evil. Uh, but whatever, they're staying, and the main girl finds like a kid's room with some baby stuff in it, but it's all from the like the 50s. Ma and Pa's cabin is like frozen in time and out of date. And that's where she'll meet Fanny. Fanny is this uh, grown up woman that pretends she's a young girl. And she'll talk about her baby, which is clearly 
not going to be a normal baby. And I kind of wish, you know, they drew out this comparison a little more. You know, you have the final girl that legitimately had a baby and lost it. And then you're going to have the horror twist with this Fanny character. I wish they emphasized the connection much more than they did. It is there a little bit, but that could have been like the whole focus of the movie if they wanted to. But anyway, you have her and then her brothers will randomly pop out of nowhere. It, it's kind of weird they weren't there initially, but spacing them out where, you know, more people will pop out and you're like, what the heck's on this island? What's going on here? It, it kind of does lend to anything can happen. Again, though, you know Ma and Pa did something to these people. I wish that was explained more. I wish we got more of what Ma and Pa were up to, but we don't really get a big in-depth exploration as to what their operation is on this island, and I would have loved much more backstory for these kids. But whatever. As I said, when the kids enter, they do take over the movie. They have some fun, creepy scenes, and when the movie goes for horror 100%, it really does fire and work out better. Again, though, these kids are on screen for a little bit too much, and at times they can be unintentionally just weird and kind of silly. So yeah, the movie's not 100%. I would have loved more focus on Ma and Pa. I would have loved to know more about what's going on here. As I hinted at earlier, we do get a pretty decent finale and a good, unique thing for the final girl to do here. And overall, I did like this movie. It's just one that I definitely think could have been way better. And I actually think this one should have a remake. I think with another pass at the script, ironing a few things out, like A24? Hey, maybe give this to Ty West even. We could really get something good out of this, and I, I would honestly love to see a good remake of it. Anyway, though, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my slasher movies playlist. If you guys want to see me talk about more stuff, you can find that there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.